an important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins. And prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out. When Inside the NBA returns, we'll update that tight race for the top spot in the Midwest, and we'll profile a guy with all-star stats, but not all-star status. Rodney Strickland, born July 11th, 1966. Today's feature is a legend in the game, and depending on who you talk to, the best point guard to ever come out of New York City, and maybe even to play in the NBA. He's no question one of the best to never make an all-star team, and here's why. Being a New York City player comes with a lot of expectations, even more so playing the point guard position. New York has always had the aura and impression that getting one to play for your team will bring toughness, the ability to compete under the bright lights, and a leader who you'd expect to come in and add wins to a team through his dazzling point guard play. Dazzling is almost an aspect you'd expect from a New York point guard, and sometimes that gets in the way of their games developing into what fans see them as, far as what they should be doing, opposed to what's best for their game. They've been criticized for such things like playing too much for the crowd and neglecting other aspects like shooting and being under control on and off the floor, some say for good reason. Rod Strickland experienced his fair share of both, which we'll talk about today, and is viewed very differently in different people's eyes for his on and off the court story. But one thing that's consistent is that in the long list of point guards, in particular from the mecca of basketball as they say, he's at the top of the list and embodies what it means to be a basketball point guard from that side of town, good or not so much. Let's talk about three reasons he's at the top of that list, but never fully showed why, looking at the results of his NBA career. Salute to everyone that's requested this guy. Salute to Rod Strickland. Much respect. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Ash, cut him. Rod Strickland is from the Bronx, New York. South Bronx, to be exact. At his prime, he was a listed, and I use that word lightly, 6'3 point guard, 190 pounds, that in the late 80s throughout the 90s, ushered in what you'd expect from a point guard from that area and era. To this day, if you're from the tri-state, you're compared to Rod Strickland and that style of point guard play. He was a great ball handler, crafty, with tons of creativity, and one of the NBA players I've watched growing up that I've never seen anyone block. When talking about great little man finishers in league history, if his name isn't recalled behind Kyrie Irving, it would be a travesty, much like recognition he receives for his play during and after he left the sport. A true legend no matter what held his career back that was an original and left his fingerprints all over the sport possibly forever. But let's talk about what held him back from ever making an all-star team and being mentioned among the transcendent point guards of the league like his talent suggested he should. Stunt number one, drafted by the Knicks. When I write the official stunted growth book, one of the biggest stunts in it would have to be simply titled The Knicks. For whatever reason, no matter the leadership in place, they've always been underwhelming. Maybe the expectations for the franchise that plays in the heart of the sport creates unfair pressure, or there's some sort of Haitian, Jamaican, Chinese mojo on that team that always wows you with the moves they make. 
For whatever reason, the team selected Rod Strickland in the 1988 NBA Draft while already having second year and team leading point guard Mark Jackson, who was basically the same player with even the same pedigree as Strickland. Now, part of me gets it because in the 88 draft and that era, the league was being dominated by a certain position, centers, power forwards, and shooting guards, which made the first point guard not come off the board until 15. Rod was selected at 19th and one of only two taken in the first round altogether. In hindsight, he wound up not only being the best point guard of that draft, but arguably having a better career of any player taken in front of him that year. I think beginning his career the way he did, with the team he did, behind the player he came into, stunted the beginning of his professional growth and set the groundwork for his future stunts, including being traded just after his rookie season and having to hold out for his next team. In college, Rod became a star for DePaul University from the day he stepped on the floor. His numbers would increase every season, and by his junior year, he averaged 20 points a game, 8 assists, and 3 steals. He led his team to the tournament every year, including two Sweet 16 appearances, becoming an All-American. Entering the draft after his junior season, you would have loved to see him taken by a team he'd have a little more freedom to control and put in position from day one to implement his fingerprints on the franchise. Having that, I think, would have seen his entire legacy change. The team traded him to San Antonio in the middle of the 89-90 season after seeing that having both he and Jackson wouldn't work. He began his Spur career playing very solid, but eventually the team and he couldn't see eye to eye, leading to a holdout by Strickland and him leaving the very next season. Stunt number two, respect. As in something defenses rarely gave to Rod as a shooter. He was so good getting by his defenders with his strength, crafty ball handling, shiftiness, and finishing ability that his defenders usually played back on him, letting him shoot instead of embarrassing them off the dribble and at the rim. Him having a better jump shot that stretched out to the three-point line would have made Strickland one of the best point guards of all time, right behind guys like Magic and Isaiah Thomas. For whatever reason, he was not really a threat from outside, although in college he wasn't that bad. Understandably, the three-point line and level of competition is easier at that level, and when you're the face of the program, it comes with comfortability and a green light to be yourself, which builds confidence and production. In the NBA, the line is further, competition stiffer, and quick results is something you need in order for players and franchises not to box you in as just a driver or passer. For his career, he shot 28% from three, along with low 70s from the foul line. Immediately, you know that as a team, there were at least two ways to approach preparing to guard Strickland. Let him shoot and live with that, or when he drives, it would be best to foul him and make him earn his money from the line. In Portland and his next team, Washington, though, that was easier said than done because it's where he had his best seasons as a scorer and distributor, even averaging 18 and 10 in 97-98 in 76 games, being snubbed from another all-star team in favor of guys like Penny Hardaway in a season where he became the 25th player in NBA history to put up 10,000 points and 5,000 assists, and Joe Dumas in back-to-back -back years. He did all of this even without an outside shot to speak of, something many New York City point guards would be known for even to this day. Strickland, at his peak, shot 63% within three feet of the rim, something that's only done by a handful of guards in the league a year. Imagine him having a better jumper, allowing more open range to the rim. Stunt number three, attitude and injuries. Two things you never want to have in combination with each other or at all as a professional basketball player in a career field where your tool is your body and your interactions along with the things you say affect your growth. 
attitude allegations and a disruptive player in the locker room as well as off the court began to follow Rod Strickland as he'd do things like mispractice without the team knowing, then get upset with the team if they gave him limited minutes in the next game. His attitude and respect for the game also came in him neglecting things like his diet and beginning to use alcohol more frequently. He tore his hamstring against the Bulls in 98 for the Wizards right before the playoffs that saw the team decline and miss the postseason. He was leading the league in assists at the time. Over the course of his career, he's played more than 80 games only four times in his 17 years due to minor and major injuries. Strickland went on to be critical of the team for their losing ways and began to allegedly drink and smoke more than he came to practice at times. His attitude reputation began all the way back to the Olympics and Portland where he and coach PJ Carlissimo clashed seemingly weekly as the coach demanded more from his star guard. And Rod, who was one of the league's best point guards, had an ego that told him he could do whatever he wanted. I don't like him and you can write that, quoted Strickland, after missing practice and being benched by Carlissimo. Going all the way back to the 1988 Olympic trials when Strickland was still in college, he was quoted saying that he was slighted by the coach in many of his drills, causing him to fail to make the team. Wherever his disdain for Carlissimo began, it gave him a reputation of a player you don't want around your team. That, along with durability issues, his career began to decline and he became a journeyman after the Wizards. All in all, Rod Strickland had a solid basketball career and a point guard many would take to lead their team, but equally wouldn't want anywhere near theirs because of the above mention. He's considered one of the best ball handlers and passers ever and is even in the New York Basketball Hall of Fame inducted in 2008. But for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC stunted growth and I'm out. Also, if you have some time, I'm inviting you to check out the new website. Many have been asking for a cash app or how they can support the channel. Honestly, you watching the video and getting to this point of it is more than enough. But if you want to go the extra mile and get some pretty cool gear at the same time, new winter hoodies have just been released. It's a part of a project I'm working on, all original designs. For now, there's the gold tips along with the red and black. A play on words that exalt the game we all know and love. StunnerGrow3.com if you want to get some gear and show some support. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. I'm really out this time. Chill.